nothing's loud. up YouTube back in the garage working on the MR2 today and it's a big day uh, because we are getting supercharger ready as you saw in the opening b-roll if you didn't see the last video because of the big Volkswagen right on the front of the thumbnail um, the last video I did work on the MR2 a lot and got all of the gauges installed so if you want to go see those uh, lit up and uh, watch how I installed those um, that was in the last video with the Volkswagen on the front the GTI the new GTI. But today we are actually going to get this thing ready for boost. Obviously this thing won't be making boost and running right away, but we are gonna spin the supercharger today. We're gonna make some supercharger noises. Won't be pushing air into the engine probably, um, but yeah, it's gonna be whining. So anyways, um, I was getting the supercharger ready. You saw I got it out of the car. So I went ahead and changed the oil in it and I drained out some pretty clean fluid. Um, I don't know what they put in it whenever they restored this thing or refurbished it, but I swapped it out for some AC Delco supercharger oil. I've been reading a lot about whether I use the uh, OEM Toyota stuff um, or if it could use other stuff. And from what I've been reading, uh, you can honestly use gear oil. Um, this supercharger oil from AC Delco works or a lot of the other brands would probably work. Pretty much uh, all the oil's doing is just cooling the bearings that are in there and all the gears that are in there meshing together. So pretty much a lot of the different stuff will work. Um, you can you can read about it, the SC14s, uh, there's a lot of information on it. So just, yeah, I guess find somebody who used the same oil that you did and you'll probably be good to go. But this stuff is relatively cheap if you decide to go that route, um, at least compared to the Toyota stuff. Then I also went ahead and cleaned it out in the sink. You can pretty much just uh, rinse out the rotors with water. Um, if you really think it's dirty and you need, it's like seas, you could try soapy water. Uh, but mine seems to spin really freely and be pretty clean. So I just rinsed it out to make sure there was nothing loose hanging out in there before I start spinning this thing at thousands of RPM. <laughs> What up? What up? We got yeah. Mr. Braden here. What's what's your YouTube username? I don't even remember now. <laughs> I think it's at Begunier. Something funky like yeah, that. Yeah, I think so. Braden is, I'd say, the number one fan on the YouTube. Matt Matt doesn't even watch the videos. Come Shut on. up. Yes, I do. <laughs> but Braden came over and got himself. Show him what you got. Some it. stickers. And you guys can do the same. Uh, you don't have to come to my house. I'll send them to you. But Brayden lives five minutes down the road. So seven, seven. seven. <laughs> he came and grabbed some stickers. So, And he'll probably be in the videos now because now that we know he lives so close, he's going to be hanging out more. Heck yeah. <laughs> all right. So we got the supercharger back on. Um, this time it's officially all mounted with all of the spacers. So everything seems to be lining up just as I planned. And then I also went ahead and got the belt on with the pulleys. So I had to add this idler pulley right here uh, to give me more uh, surface contact on my crank belt. And then I also swapped out the idler pulley on the tensioner for a ribbed <laughs> pulley rather than a smooth pulley. So basically that allowed me to change the routing because of where the supercharger is. Basically it was hitting, the belt was hitting the tensioner going up to the alternator. So. Um, I had to kind of switch things around to get it to clear everything. My only worry right now is that the the belt has very minimal contact on the crank. So it's only touching about a quarter of it, maybe even slightly less. Um, so that has potential to slip. Um, do I think it's gonna? No, but it's an experiment and we're gonna find out. So for now, that's how I'm gonna try it. If I find out that it's slipping, 
then we'll we'll go from there. So I'd have to kind of reroute some things, maybe add a few pulleys and um, pencil sharpener. No, extended stud. <laughs> so yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna go with that for now. Um, before I start this thing up and get it spinning, though, um, we're calling it for tonight. Tomorrow, I'll put the fuel pump in. What's its number? And mm -hmm. then we'll start uh, start it up tomorrow. So we'll cut to that right now. What is up, YouTube? Back in the garage. Um, so like I said, last night we got the supercharger hooked up. So the belt is on and the supercharger is ready to spin. Um, so like I said, I'm going to go ahead and swap out the fuel pump. So I got the fuel pump out and got my new fuel pump uh, ready to put in. So there's a few different options. I decided to go with the Dietchworks uh, 65C. It's a 265 liter per hour. The 265 should handle up to around 400 horsepower, which uh, that 2ZZ will not be making 400 horsepower um, in, the sp in the state it's in, that is for sure. So I use Dietchworks on the LS swapped RX-8 and that fuel pump's working fine. Um, I hear a lot of good stuff about Dietchworks, so um, I decided to go with it, and the price point is about the same as, you know, AEM or Walbro. So um, that's what I'm going with. I got the fuel pump hanger here. I'm going to disassemble it and throw in the fuel pump. got the fuel pump in I also went ahead and added in uh, my exhaust manifold gasket so that thing should seal up now and it shouldn't sound like a tractor anymore uh, if you saw that video it had huge exhaust leaks so I'm hoping that that gasket seals everything up um, I had to extend my O2 sensor harness here so that is now plugged in I'll you know tuck that away uh, whenever I clean everything up but it is time to spin the supercharger I got all the intercooler piping at least mocked back up with the math um, and then obviously it's just open down here so the supercharger is not feeding the engine thank goodness it'll basically just be running NA but then we'll have supercharger noises hopefully um, we'll see if my belt is all gonna work out at least to start so yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna set up the camera and you guys are gonna see the supercharger spin before I do so I'll be in the car. make sure the belt is not slipping off so it appears that my belt is slight my pulley is slightly misaligned on the supercharger so I may have to do some adjusting wow that thing's loud <laughs> I'm about one rib off on the pulley. You can see it kind of settled in. So there, I had one open rib on this end or on this inside. So you can tell it shifted over one. So I'm about I'm about a sixteenth of an inch off on that pulley that I, it needs to slide over further. I'm gonna have to figure out how to fix that. But dude, that thing is loud. Holy moly! <laughs> All right, one more time just for fun. I'm gonna shoot it from this side so you kind of get the exhaust sound as well to see what it's gonna sound like.
Alright guys, I'm gonna just go ahead and keep this video short. The injectors aren't in yet, but um, that'll be the next step. Get the injectors in, hook up the ECU, um, and then we're off to the races. So if you got any tips for me on how to tune <laughs> the Power FC, uh, let me know. Otherwise, I'll be reading a bunch of uh, forums and watching videos and stuff. So this, may be, this will be my first car uh, that I'm gonna tune. So uh, I'm excited, a lot to learn gonna be fun i think uh man that thing is so loud it's gonna be sweet <laughs> things gonna sound insane anyways i'm gonna end it there look out for the next one we'll uh we'll start getting this thing tunable it's ready for boost though it's one pipe away from making boost anyways see you guys later stay tuned for more cool stuff in the garage